pack his contos and he will bring us to the dark side of uh, physics um, with a talk that has the title, A Hybrid Cavity Transmond Magnon Haloscope for Dark Matter Detection. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you, thank you. This works, yeah. Thank you very much for the invitation uh, in this uh, marvelous place, uh, first of all, with the organizers. Uh, and uh, I'm really happy uh, to be here in person, uh, be able to discuss in real life uh, with uh, everyone. And so, um, so today I will talk about uh, uh, something related to quantum microwaves, but uh, not well, where we use condensed matter to try to build something to detect uh, cosmological objects. And so um, this work has been done uh, uh, by my PhD student, uh, Arnaud Théry, and uh, uh, postdoc William Legrand, and with the collaboration with uh, Matthew Delbecq. And on the theory side, we benefit from the long-standing long collaboration with Audrey Cotet. Okay. And so, uh, okay, this is actually a singlet state, but a microscopic one uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, like a recent... Uh, like attempt to convey more of quantum physics uh, into uh, the society. Yeah. Okay, so, but uh, this is not uh, what I want to talk to you about today. So, well, uh, so the, uh, the idea is uh, really to use quantum microwaves, uh, uh, like um, all the techniques uh, which we have learned from um, uh, quantum microwaves uh, to uh, uh, probe uh, cosmological objects. Uh, because, in fact, there are many good reasons, uh, so with quotes, uh, for the existence of dark matter in the universe. In fact, uh, uh, if, like, uh, this is, uh, like, the content of, uh, like, uh, of estimated matter energy uh, uh, in the universe, uh, and it turns out that we, uh, like, the, we, we think that uh, we actually know only a very a tiny amount uh, uh, of, we understand a very, very small uh, amount of uh, the whole uh, matter energy content in the universe. So, this is the, so there is, uh, let's say, essentially 5% of ordinary matter, uh, 26, uh, roughly 26% of dark matter, and the rest of dark energy. And, uh, and uh, um, uh, so I'm going to focus on dark matter. And uh, essentially, the idea is that um, uh, the dark matter uh, um, would have, uh, if it exists, a uh, um, non zero density. Uh, in all the galactic halos, so in, in, in the Milky Way, in our, at our location, but would be extremely weakly interacting with light and, nor, uh, and low normal matter. And so uh, the idea is to use uh, the uh, techniques for microwave uh, uh, for amplification to probe uh, this invisible dark matter. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to focus in one spe specific class of uh, dark matter models, which are called action models. Okay. So, does it work? Okay, good. Okay, so um, the uh, the action uh, uh, like particles have emerged uh, um, in uh, the high energy physics uh, um, uh, context. Uh, it was first uh, uh, proposed uh, by uh, Peche and Quinn in, at the end of the 1970s uh, uh, to solve uh, um, uh, the strong, uh, what is called the strong CP problem uh, of the standard model, uh, which is uh, one term uh, in, in the Lagrangian of the standard model, which is uh, uh, like the unsuccessful, let's say, uh, uh, term. Uh, and which uh, actually, um, uh, it a priori non-zero, but uh, it's, since it would give uh, an electric dipole to the neutron if it would exist, uh, and uh, that the electric dipole of the neutron is severely constrained to be uh, experimentally to be zero, uh, we should like uh, uh, then uh, there was the question of uh, what was wrong, and one solution which is now I mean uh, um, which have been uh, brought uh, by uh, uh, Peche and Quinn and, and further worked out by Weinberg and Vilcek is that. Uh, you have, uh, you could, like, uh, this uh, could arise uh, from, uh, let's say, uh, um, a symmetry breaking uh, um, in the early universe, uh, which would create uh, um, uh, a new uh, um, particle uh, field, which is called the axion, uh, which would be the Nabu-Goldson boson of this uh, symmetry breaking. 
and uh, which would essentially uh, uh, explain uh, why, I mean, uh, uh, there is this kind of term arising, uh, uh, but uh, in a dy dynamical fashion. And so the idea is that uh, the, um, so the quantum chromodynamics, uh, uh, like essentially tilt this, uh, this Mexican hat potential and, and, and give a finite mass to this, uh, uh, to this uh, excitation. Uh, and so the action would be the mode of, uh, like the angular mode here, which goes into some place. So, so the, the, the QCD tells you uh, uh, like, uh, that it should be, in fact, uh, so although the constraints are not very, um, uh, the bounds are not very hard, uh, somewhere in the microelectron volt range, uh, so hence in, uh, in the microwave range, uh, between roughly uh, one gigahertz and hundreds of gigahertz, and so this is why, I mean, uh, uh, you can be uh, willing to try to detect these, one, these, these objects with microwave fields. But it's uh, uh, um, also very weakly coupled uh, to ordinary matter or and to uh, light. And this is why uh, such a, a class of, uh, uh, of particles or fields are uh, very good candidates for dark matter, one of the reasons. Okay. And so one of the main consequences of the possible existence of uh, uh, the action field is that it should modify uh, um, by a tiny bit uh, the Maxwell's equations. So it should essentially appear as a new term uh, in the uh, um, Hamiltonian of the electromagnetic field, which would have this form. So it's a magnetoelectric term uh, and um, uh, so, um, uh, which is modulating in time. So there is the, uh, like this is the coupling strength here. Um, that's the amplitude of the, of the action field. And this is here the mass of the action, which should be, as I told you, somewhere between uh, um, uh, one gigahertz and hundreds of gigahertz. But it can be actually even lower on, on the RF side and higher towards the terahertz side. And uh, uh, so this is, this, uh, there are other uh, couplings which are possible uh, to, uh, to fermions. So, they, you, so, so they, they, they also can couple to fermions, but this is uh, um, the term which is the less model dependent. But then in order to still, uh, you need to do some models to uh, actually estimate this coupling strength. And this is actually a very small coupling strength. So these are the two, uh, let's say, uh, like mainly used uh, uh, like uh, kind of model which, uh, which estimate this guy. So actually, if, if you plug in numbers for um, like, uh, uh, in, in, like in, uh, in the perspective of, of, of doing these experiments in microwave cavities, um, uh, in fact, uh, this would correspond to a, a shift in frequency in a Hamiltonian of around 10 to the minus 11 hertz. So you're like you're starting with something which will be have a, a frequency of 10 to the nine, and you want to detect something which is 10 to minus 11. So you have 20 orders of magnitude. So that's kind of a challenging, right? So 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 now the question is how to detect such a small correction to Maxwell's equation. Okay, and so um, and so the, this was uh, like uh, okay, the, the, a priori um, almost a philosophical let's say question. Uh, since it's extremely small, uh, like uh, this, uh, the coupling. And then Pierre Sekivy, the 1980s, uh, uh, came up with a solution. So this, actually, this E dot B term, I mean, is kind of uh, um, uh, linked to this uh, kind of uh, triangular, uh, like, uh, processes, uh, uh, which are linked to the chiral anomaly. Um, and, and so the idea is that if there is an axion uh, uh, arriving, and, uh, and uh, they, um, and, and a constant magnetic field in time. So this magnetoelectric term uh, yields a coupling to photons. Uh, in particular, if the photons are um, the photons of a single mode of the electromagnetic field, which is uh, trapped into, uh, for example, a microwave cavity. So uh, in fact, uh, uh, Pierre Sekivy said, okay, um, 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 like if you now um, uh, want to detect this, uh, this, uh, this uh, object, so you need to place the whole cavity into a constant magnetic field. And, uh, uh, and if you're able to measure um, uh, very accurately the microwave power coming out of this microwave cavity, uh, you will be able to detect uh, the presence uh, at, of, uh, of this term. 
Okay, but this is a, a, a needle in a haystack problem because you don't know where the, uh, the action is, uh, right? And this is a very feeble, feeble signal. So in order to establish a common vocabulary, uh, I think it's interesting to see exactly how this comes about, uh, just to see what are the constraints. Uh, and uh, and it's, it's nice to, to come back, I mean, to the original problem where you have here, this is this extra term in Hamilton in which you want to detect. That's the cavity mode here, and this is the bath. And you can quantize the, ele the electric field here. So this is, of course, exactly like CTV did not do these things in this uh, language, but this is, of course, very, uh, completely equivalent. And essentially, if you write down the equation of motion uh, of the field of the cavity, uh, now you have the kappa here, which is uh, connected to the bath. And what you see here is that uh, the uh, coupling to the action is actually hap like, uh, showing up as a driving term of the cavity. And so uh, uh, if you go now in the rotating frame, uh, what you see is that uh, um, essentially this means that uh, the actions, if they exist, they indeed uh, uh, contribute. But this is a coherent term, right? Because that's, that's really important. This is not uh, um, just, this is more than just the power. Uh, this is, they contribute to the uh, uh, amplitude of the field um, uh, with this, uh, um, uh, with an amplitude which is proportional to the magnetic field. So you need a priori large magnetic fields. And uh, uh, with this uh, very tiny coupling strength. And of course, uh, uh, this uh, now is, a very, is mostly efficient when the action mass is resonant with the action cavity. And so now you understand the problem is that, of course, uh, as you could expect from the, the beginning, is that uh, if now this, this guy, you don't know the frequency of this guy, uh, this guy, essentially, if you want to optimize the cavity in your measurement setup, uh, this has to be fixed or weakly tunable. And so, and so since you don't know, I mean, where this uh, will be, uh, essentially, you have to do many attempts, uh, and essentially, you will uh, um, exclude uh, the different uh, um, uh, thin lines uh, in the phase diagram of coupling and mass. Uh, and uh, and this, this is uh, um, very complicated uh, in principle. And now, since you want to, if you want to measure power, now you want to measure A dagger A, and this is, now you pay, I mean, the, the, the price that this is, uh, this is squared. So, so you, you gain because this is B squared, but this is squared here, so uh, that's, uh, that's again, I mean, uh, uh, a further challenge. Okay. Okay, nevertheless, uh, especially uh, uh, since the advent of uh, quantum limited uh, 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 microwave detection techniques, uh, there are many people who have done uh, uh, very important contributions to, the, uh, uh, to this field. So, um, so they're like, um, this is uh, the f like some kind of the, uh, the coupling, uh, um, uh, the coupling uh, uh, mass uh, map. In yellow here, this is uh, the, the region where Q the QCD actions would exist. And here, now you have uh, these thin lines uh, uh, which um, uh, are actually wider than the actual, uh, the actual uh, line width uh, in, in real life uh, in, this, in this graph. So there is the haystack experiment uh, uh, and there is the quarks experiment also. And so there is also very important uh, uh, collaboration in ADMX where at lower frequencies you, they, they could uh, have the, some tunability, but I think this is, these are many different experimental results concatenated. And so, and so, the, so you see this is exactly what I told you, so that you, 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 you can uh, um, exclude uh, thin lines uh, uh, in this phase diagram. So it's a priori difficult to reach the cosmologically relevant level because this is, these are tiny coupling strengths. And, uh, and um, uh, nevertheless, I mean, uh, there are many people now working on this, uh, um, more than uh, ADMX haystack quarks. I mean, uh, other also which, uh, um, uh, like uh, I haven't uh, cited that. Uh, and uh, essentially, uh, the idea is that to use uh, quantum resources uh, uh, to, um, uh, to go further, to, to speed up these kind of measurements and to go further down. So for example, in this haystack paper here, uh, they used uh, a squeezed, uh, let's say, uh, uh, this is this paper, paper published in Nature uh, last year. Okay. But we'd like uh, uh, to try to avoid, I mean, uh, uh, to uh, build a new, uh, because this, 
this is uh, even with uh, the resources uh, of uh, um, the like uh, squeeze city, it seems still extremely challenging to to cover like a sizable part of this uh, of this bag of this map. So we wanted to 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 find a different to follow a different path, and this different path uh, is actually like a very simple idea is that. Uh, what if now I replace the B here by a, um, a, a field which is oscillating in time with a tunable frequency? So this, uh, uh, this uh, in fact, uh, like in microwave engineering, people know very well how to do this for passive filters, for example, they use a ferromagnetic resonance. And so the idea is to do exactly the same thing. So, so which means that we, we replace, uh, uh, like this is the B, so the B can come from the magnetic mode now. Uh, we will replace the static B by an oscillating B arising from a magnetic mode. So, for example, uh, in the ferromagnetic insulators, uh, these magnetic modes can be very well defined in frequency. Uh, and so, uh, and so now the question: now you replace uh, this uh, condition of uh, uh, resonance uh, between the cavity and uh, um, um, and the action by a three uh, now um, uh, uh, frequency. Um, uh, condition where essentially now the magnetic resonance we can just tune it by uh, just uh, uh, the Larmor, uh, let's say, precession of this uh, magnetization around the static magnetic field. So you can continuously now in the same experiment in principle uh, uh, do that. Okay. And so, of course, now, I mean, uh, I have to show you that uh, we can actually implement. Uh, um, this kind of stuff uh, in an uh, in, in actual uh, uh, experiment. And so the, here is how it looks like. Uh, so we chose uh, uh, to work out, to work uh, uh, with uh, not uh, a ferromagnetic material, uh, although we did some tests uh, with, ferm with ferromagnetic materials, but with an anti-ferromagnetic crystal. Uh, so there are some advantages of, uh, of using an anti-ferromagnetic crystal uh, because it has no net uh, magnetization. Uh, and so this actually, um, uh, like we took inspiration from this work um, by uh, um, uh, Everts. Uh, um, uh. So this is a 3D microwave cavity. This is called a loop gap cavity. You have two kind of pillars here. Uh, this is a like centimetric scale. Uh, so this is a, a cubic uh, uh, crystal of five uh, by five, mil uh, five millimeters uh, side. And in fact, uh, since, uh, well, I mean, uh, we, we, like, uh, we have seen uh, uh, this week, but I mean, this, this is uh, kind of uh, something which is now well established uh, in uh, quantum amplification. You need some unharmonicity to, to amplify uh, tiny microwave signals. So, so we need to, to put some, uh, some twinkle of unharmonicity. And uh, we would like to put an, so, we, so the, like the obvious uh, candidate is a superconducting circuit. But uh, we want to have something which will be magnetic field resilient. So this is why, uh, took, taking inspiration from the Carlsworth folks, uh, we opted for uh, a granular aluminum uh, transmount qubit. So here, this is the granular aluminum bridge here. And here, these are niobium uh, electrodes. So we use a two-angle uh, evaporation uh, and so, um, uh, and so the, um, to, to, in order to make this, this kind of uh, uh, bridge. And so this is what uh, hopefully uh, will give a, um, a rise to unharmonicity. So essentially, the magnetic resonance of this anti-ferromagnet, if everything works fine, will provide the, the tunability with the magnetic field. And the unharmonicity of the granular lumen transfer will give a resource for essentially photon to frequency conversion. OK. And so, okay, let's first uh, see what the, the, the granular aluminum transmon uh, uh, gives like, as a, like an harmonicity. So this is a single tone spectroscopy of uh, the cavity plus transmon system. Oh, sorry. So, um, so yeah, sorry. So um, this is uh, the, the resonance of one. There are these kind of uh, this loop gap cavities have two modes. Uh, so there is one at 6.8 and one at 7.4. So this is the 6.8 mode. And what you see is that indeed uh, you have the characteristic, um, let's say, um, um, a duffing oscillator uh, sh line shape uh, for the transmission when you, uh, when you drive the cavity with a large power. 
So this is, of course, there is, this is the power at room temperature. This is, of course, uh, strongly attenuated. And if now I look at the, at the, trend, at the, like the resonance of the superconducting circuit, uh, so uh, this is at, at the lowest power. This is, uh, this, um, so there is a much lower transmission because it's, you see, strongly detuned from uh, the, the cavity. And what you see is that uh, you also have the characteristic uh, unharmonic oscillator line shape when you put a large power at the, at the, at the, at the fridge. Yeah. So this allows us to calibrate essentially the transmit unharmonicity to, a, a, it's a weak and, uh, weekly unharmonic oscillator essentially. So it's 180 kilohertz. And this, uh, since we are strongly detuned, it leads to a small uh, care uh, to the, for the cavity of uh, around 70 hertz. Okay. So in order to further characterize the transmon, we can uh, now go into the time domain uh, measurement. Uh, and so, and, and try to explore uh, um, uh, the magnetic field resilience uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the qubit. So this is a zero magnetic field, uh, and this is the Rabi-like uh, 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 drive of uh, the, the qubit. So you see, this is the, now you are uh, like at the, at, this, at the frequency I was showing you uh, on the left, your graph, uh, as a function of time. And what you see is that you have Rabi-like oscillations. And uh, so it's kind of a truncated uh, 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 Chevron uh, pattern. So you see it's, you would expect something which goes down. And in fact, this is kind of, uh, uh, so I, we, we don't have many examples. Uh, so the only example I know is uh, recent work in graphene transmounts, which look like a bit like that. So, so we think this is because of the weak and harmonicity. And so this Rabi-like manipulation um, so also has a kind of a different um, uh, amplitude uh, uh, versus uh, Rabi frequency uh, dependence. So we maybe see the, like the two-third power law, which uh, was actually um, uh, like, uh, uh, investigated in this paper by the Grenal folks. Uh, so we maybe see the two-third power law indicating that we're really in a, in a weakly and harmonic oscillator. And what we see is that something which is interesting, so we could push it further, but we, uh, like, uh, um, uh, it's still under, I mean, uh, um, uh, like, um, uh, under me measurement. Uh, so essentially, we can uh, go up to, up to uh, like, a 90 millitesla to do, uh, uh, to see how this guy changes. So now, I mean, I anticipate this is, uh, this is um, actually, we don't see the, the same T1s here, because uh, in this setup, uh, the, the cavity modes were closer because we had incorporated the magnetic crystal. And so this changes uh, uh, the frequency of the modes because uh, these magnetic crystals has a, a large epsilon. So nevertheless, we can uh, dry, like, do some Rabi drive uh, to um, quite like a rather decent ma magnetic field uh, for a transmon qubit. Um, and, uh, uh, and also considering that this was out of plane magnetic field. Okay. And the T1 uh, like a change from here to there is completely consistent with the Purcell effect from the cavity mode. Uh, okay. So we can do also Ramsey interferometry to further characterize the, the granulonium transmon and, and see uh, indeed that uh, we see uh, the, the AC star shift from uh, arising directly from the qubit anharmonicity. So now we do the Ramsey uh, um, um, like a sequence. As a function of the power, it's the third tone on the, on the, on the system, which uh, is directly onto the cavity mode. And so this is uh, exactly what you would expect, I mean, um, uh, qualitatively from uh, like the, the effect of the, uh, of the drive, I mean, of the cavity uh, to the, to the transmit. Okay. Okay, so now let's now turn to the magnetic part of the, uh, of the detector and, um, and let's see uh, uh, the magnetic crystal. So this is uh, what you would expect from the phase diagram of the uh, gadolinium vanadate uh, crystal. So we would like to focus on the, the interferomagnetic regime uh, with these two lines, uh, which are the two sublattices of the interferomagnet, which start at around 34 gigahertz. There is one sublattice which is uh, going down, and this is the one which we will be mainly coupled to, and one sublattice which is going up in frequency. And, and, so, um, um, and so this is... Uh, uh, like uh, the, the, the main region where we would like to, uh, to look at the, the system. And the nail temperature of this, uh, this antiferromagnet is around 2.5 Kelvin. This explains why this exchange interaction is also uh, small and it's, uh, and it's interesting for microwave uh, uh, detection techniques because now you see that you can cover essentially a span of 68 gigahertz roughly uh, 
with these two lines if you're able, able to address this line, so which is a potentially a very wide band uh, detection. Okay, so uh, when we put everything together, uh, uh, here is how the, the, trans the map of the transmission of the DTEX detector uh, looks like. Uh, so you have the mode one here, which uh, like goes down in magnetic field. Uh, this is the mode two. Uh, here this is the, so of course it's so the, the granular aluminum tran transmon transition, which you actually faintly see up to uh, like uh, roughly 400 milli Tesla. Um, and, uh, and this is uh, um, the magnetic mode going down very fast. And this is completely consistent with, with uh, the line going down um, and starting at uh, uh, roughly 35 gigahertz and going down with the slope of uh, G factor equal to. So what you see is that you have a very strong hybridization. This is normal because you have a microscopic uh, um, uh, uh, magnetic material uh, with the mode one. Uh, and so in fact, uh, it's so strong that actually you redefine the modes, but if, so like the avoided crossing, uh, like, uh, well, it cannot like have the same meaning as the, uh, like the, well, okay, it has the same meaning, but it's uh, like, uh, it's, you see that you have like a, like a region where you completely lose the transmission. And, uh, and that's on, so then um, this avoided crossing, uh, um, uh, implies a, 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 like the ultra strong coupling to mode one, which is the coupling strength of around one gigahertz. Okay. And so now uh, what we would like to do is to really show that we can follow because we want to have a, a, a wide band detector on a, on a wide uh, um, a frequency range, uh, the um, magnetic mode. And so uh, this is what we did uh, by doing two-tone spectroscopy. And so this is a, a cut. This is now the phase of the microwave signal at the cavity at the mode one frequency as a function of the, of the um, frequency of a second tone, which is uh, uh, actually added to this, uh, to this first tone. And uh, since we have now an harmonicity, we actually engineer an interaction in principle uh, between the magnetic mode and the cavity mode, and this is and, and this results in the frequency shift of the cavity mode as you drive. I mean the magnetic resonance, uh, as you see here, and this is exactly this manifests itself as this uh, dip in uh, uh, the phase, and this allows you uh, so exactly the same spirit as what you showed this morning to follow. I mean, so there are many magnetic transitions, but we 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 followed, for example, this green one here. And you see that you, you can span essentially on a, on a band the width of about uh, uh, 10 uh, gigahertz, uh, which is, uh, uh, and so between, and you see this works uh, up to essentially uh, like uh, roughly uh, one Tesla. Uh, and so, so we can actually indeed follow, uh, thanks to this and harmonicity, uh, the, the coupling uh, um, uh, um, to the, of the magnetic mode uh, to the, uh, the interaction of the magnetic mode with the um, uh, cavity mode. And this uh, uh, um, uh, is actually uh, like the prerequisite that we wanted to have to have a, a, a broadband uh, detector. Okay, so let's see how I mean this uh, seven, like this uh, 7.5 till 17.5 gigahertz, uh, or how it would uh, uh, look like, uh, at least in a horizontal uh, axis, uh, because we, we don't know yet, I mean, uh, where we can go, I mean, uh, how far we can go close to the, uh, to the yellow, uh, like in, in, in the coupling strength. Uh, so um, this is under development. And this is what it would look like. So you, you would see that uh, the, this uh, opens the, uh, the, the possibility to have a very broad band. I mean, you see a, a detection, uh, um, let's say, a, a window. Uh, and, so, uh, and so following this kind of magnetic mode, so there are many others, so we can, in principle, extend further. But this, the green magnetic mode, for example, will allow us to, uh, to, to uh, have a very large window of detection uh, uh, to enhance substantially the mass scanning window. And so the first detection run uh, is, is on the way. Okay, so uh, well, my time is over. And so, um, so I have demonstrated a, a, a hybrid uh, transmon magnet photon system. Uh, and so the anharmonicity plus the ultra strong coupling uh, 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 of the uh, uh, magnetic mode to the uh, cavity modes uh, 
provides, a, in principle, a large scanning range. And maybe this is a new setup for detection of uh, dark matter in a laboratory experiment. Thank you for your attention. Yeah. Thank you, Takis, for the very clear talk. Any questions? So for uh, what do you need to do to um, be able to go down to the yellow region? I mean, is it uh, how long you measure? It determines yeah, the and, and, and it's also, it depends. So in, in our detection schema, we use a, a coherent field. So we have to, to put a large coherent field in a cavity uh, to uh, essentially use this mixing uh, between the two modes. So in principle, uh, in principle, uh, you, do, you just need uh, to go d further down to have a larger uh, uh, coherent field. But then, of course, if you put a too large coherent field in a cavity, at some point there will be other uh, unharmonic terms which will show up. And so this is what we still don't know yet. I mean, uh, how far we can go. Uh, this is why, I mean, we are still uh, like tuning, I mean, the, 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 the setup to see uh, how far we can go. But in principle, you just need to put a large coherent field. And then uh, since we detect the phase, we just, uh, you know, this is like a ruler, right? You, you can detect a tiny angle if you have a, a long enough ruler. But you also need to measure, if you measure longer, you also, I mean, it's the same, right? Or not? Yeah, it's the same. But here, uh, since you want to detect, uh, so it depends. If you measure power, uh, you, you have to, to wait for a long enough time. If you measure coherently, like we do here, you need to measure faster than the, than the, than the, the, the coherence, uh, like the, than the, than the coherence time of the, uh, of the action in, uh, in the Earth uh, um, uh, frame. And so this is sometimes some, somewhere in the millisecond range. So we need to measure faster than this. Uh, thanks for the very nice talk. Actually, we have two questions, if I may. Uh, so first, about the antiferromagnet um, stuff. As far as I recall, my solid state class is an antiferromagnet. You have uh, up and down uh, domains, but on very short uh, length scale, while given the frequency, I guess that the actionic field has a pretty large wavelength. So, I mean, I guess there is something I don't get, but naively, it seems like the M in your equation, the magnetization would be somehow zero as seen from the, from the axonic field. So what's the, what, what is it that, yeah. that I am missing? Thank you. So, no, no, this, for the static part, you're perfectly right. Okay. But when you start to, uh, to, uh, to excite uh, the, the magnetic uh, modes, uh, it's essentially you have two, as if you would have two magnetic resonances. There is one sublattice which will have a long wavelength mo motion and the other one. Oh, it's one, like a spin wave. Exactly, okay. yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. And uh, other question along the same line. Could you replace your uh, transmon-induced anharmonicity on the cavity by an anharmonic uh, ferromagnet or antiferromagnet? Or like yeah, so th thank you for the... So we actually, at the beginning, we were a bit uh, like... To, like uh, we wanted to do that. And it turns out that... So for, ma anis for magnetic anisotropy, in principle, you also have anharmonicity, mm -hmm. which shows up. But this, so, and this has been uh, measured in uh, magnonics, in fact, but this is millihertz, uh, even at, at, the, at best. So this is extremely weak. It is much weaker uh, than, uh, than what you can get with a superconducting circuit. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thanks uh, for the interesting talk. Uh, I had the same question regarding the magnetization, uh, and I was asking, uh, um, did you think about, so there are certain ways to create squeezed magnons. Uh, and for example, in antiferromagnet, you have a two mode squeezed uh, state as you, um, might this be useful to, and, and sometimes, you know, squeeze, squeezing helps to enhance uh, the detection uh, efficiency or something like this. Did you think about this in, in, in this context? We, uh, thank you, we haven't thought about it, but uh, since you see now we, we turn uh, the, the magnets, they, they become unharmonic now because they, they interact. You see there is an interaction term with the cavity and then, in fact, if you, if you, they, they, they will also be unharmonic because you redefine the modes. So in principle, you could also play these, you could induce squeezing of, this, um, of these magnetic modes. We haven't thought uh, deeply about this, but it, yeah, it could be no, probably... In an antiferromagnet, uh, the, the, the magnets are automatically squeezed without any external perturbation. Ah, they are squeezed in the ground state, or uh, the ground state is actually a two-mode squeezed state, and 
The excitations are also special. Um, uh, so we haven't thought excitations. about it. Yeah, that we haven't thought without about. any okay. external. Thing. I see it. Yeah, I see so. it. Okay, we we thought that you have an external source of. Uh, okay. 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 Good. I think we yeah. are done. Here is a case question here. Okay, so I think we finish, and you can discuss everything with Takis later. And uh, then we continue to the next one. All right.